one aspect of the economic and political situation in the Balkans. And this aspect you will see will include several serious opportunities, obstacles and unresolved problems. <coughs> My contribution will be very concrete. Unlike most of the contributions we have heard so far. Namely, the country in the Balkan Peninsula are currently exposed to three types of expansionism, which should be analyzed as three important elements of uh, uh, global governance crossing each other here in this region in a very complex way. They are the energetic expansion of Russia toward Europe, the economic expansion of China toward Europe, and the military expansion of NATO towards Russia. These three elements, this is global government, but the three elements cross each other here in this region. And we feel that very strongly. We are living in this region. That's why I'm mentioning this. The energetic expansion of Russia toward Europe via the Balkans is realized in the following way. In the, the pan-European oil pipeline, which is a proposed pipeline for transporting Russian and Caspian oil from Constanza uh, in Romania via Serbia to Rijeka in Croatia and from there to Slovenia and uh, Trieste in Italy. Then, the Albanian, Macedonian, Bulgarian oil pipeline, which is also a proposed pipeline for transporting Russian, the same Russian and Caspian oil from Burgas in Bulgaria via Macedonia to Flora in Albania. And finally, the Turkish stream, which is a, uh, a pipeline under construction for transporting Russian national gas from Anapa in uh, Russia, across the Black Sea to Lilia Burgas, very familiar with the place, in Turkey, and that started in two, two, 2017 and should be finished in a year or two. It appeared the Turkish stream as a replacement for the South Stream, which was abandoned and the construction was stopped in 2014 under the pressure of the Western countries. There are plans to extend the Turkish stream, the pipeline, through Greece, Macedonia, Serbia, Hungary to Austria. That's why it's a, region, a real regional project. The economic expansion of China toward Europe via the Balkans is carried out through the Belt and Road Initiative, also known as the New Silk Road Initiative. It is a development strategy adopted by the Chinese government and unveiled in 2013. It involves infrastructure developments and investment in Asia, Africa, in Europe. It's a global, it's a serious element of global governance. We have to take this seriously into account. As part of the initiative, the 16 plus 1 group <coughs> was established, including 11 EU members and five, five Balkan countries. The priority areas of cooperation of the group are infrastructure, high technologies and green technologies. The group meets annually and has had so far seven summits every year. The military expansion in NATO towards Russia has, began, has been going on since the end of the Cold War in 1991 when the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact uh, were dissolved. It's no secret that the basis for the expansion is the strategic objective of the US to divide Russia in parts and take control of its rich uh, natural resources. The process came into critical point in February 2014 when the civil war in Ukraine broke out. That event could be designated as the beginning of the new Cold War, February 2014, between the US and Russia. In March 2014, the US and EU introduced severe economic sanctions to Russia, and Russia responded with countermeasures. At this moment, it seems that will be a long-lasting conflict between the US and EU on one side, 
and Russia and China on the other side. It's not between US and Russia. On the other side now, we have the U uh, Russia and China. My opinion is that, that the prospect of good governance in the Balkans are strongly connected to the three types of expansionism I have briefly described. The countries from the region should try to use the opportunities and maximize the benefits from the Russian energetic expansion and the Chinese economic expansion. We can benefit from that, the countries in the region, as well as to minimize there are negative consequences, the crucial one being reduction of their economic and political sovereignty. It's a serious game. You want the benefit, but you must have a strategy. You must have countermeasures to preserve as much as possible your economic and political sovereignty. Also, the Balkan countries should try as much as possible not to be involved in the new Cold War and thus contribute to its ending in the foreseeable future. In addition, the prospects of good governance in and among the Balkan countries should be improved by intensifying their economic, scientific and cultural cooperation. I am sure that neither the US, nor Russia, nor China would be able to prevent or would like to prevent that, our cooperation, the regional cooperation. An excellent example of this, of concrete contribution, is the establishing of the Institute for Advanced Studies in the Levant Culture and uh, Civilization. Uh, Emil Constantinescu, the founder of that institute, is here with us. That happened in October 2016 in Bucharest. That institute is the center of excellence of the World Academy of Art and Science. I'm sure that the institute will be giving concrete contributions to the region and will contribute to a certain extent to, to good governance, to understanding and good governance in the region. Uh, one of the crucial, in addition, one of the crucial political objectives in the Balkans should be the accession of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, Albania and Macedonia in the EU. That's a strategic objective of all those countries. However, that should be done respecting the territorial integrity of each of these countries. And this is a problem, we see that, and this will, that will be the problem in the future. And that has, will have to be going up in, in, in accordance with the international law. In this respect, the crucial documents to be followed are the general agreement, framework agreement for peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina, also known as the Dayton Agreement, which was signed in Paris in 1995, and also the UN Security Resolution 1244 on the ending of the NATO military intervention in Yugoslavia, which was adopted in 1999. All these countries want to join the EU, but I sincerely think that that could happen only if the international law is respected. And I have mentioned uh, the two crucial documents defining the international law. Okay, that has been a concrete story about the Balkans, but connected, as I have said, to global government.